So you're considering buying a used executive saloon and you're thinking about the BMW 3 Series or the Mercedes C-Class. Well, in this video, we're gonna look at them closely to see which one of these two is best for you. So starting with the C-Class, as you may have noticed, this is the previous generation car, which means it doesn't get the sharper front design of the latest model. But arguably, I'd say this is the slightly more elegant looking machine. Certainly it feels a bit more luxurious and therefore Mercedes, I would say. And also in this finish here, it's not got any AMG line bits on it. This is much more understated. All right, it's got some chrome, but it's much more elegant in its design. And I think it wears its body very, very well. By contrast, the three series we have here, firstly, it comes in a slightly sportier shade of blue and it's got M Sport trim, which adds a few features and a few M badges around the car. So it looks a little bit more aggressive, but even if you peeled those off and even if you had it in a more subtle color, the BMW just wears sharper lines. It's got pinched headlights. It just feels that much more purposeful. And I think that's deliberate by BMW. They want to give this car a bit more of an aggressive character. So in the interior of the Mercedes, it is very much an executive saloon experience. And I mean that as a good thing because it just means it's swish and it's comfortable. And Mercedes has thrown a lot of nice things at this interior. Even though it's the previous generation car, it still feels bang up to date. You've got lots of chrome. There are some buttons and switches where I like them to be. And you've got this nice piano black finish on the center console. But you don't get the latest infotainment system that you get in new Mercedes models, which means you don't have a widescreen slab up here with two screens. Instead, you've got a digital instrument cluster here here, and then a separate infotainment screen here. But they're very good. It's sharp, it's clear, and it's customizable. And this is also very good, responsive, reactive, and it's controlled by this rotary dial down here, which means you don't have to fiddle around with the screen while you're driving. You can keep your hand on the wheel, your eyes ahead, and just occasionally glance at the screen and then use this rotary dial. It's very, very good to use and it's very effective, let me tell you. Elsewhere in this interior, lots and lots of storage space. You've got room under here for two cups. You've also got a space for your phone. And then here is where you plug in your phone as well if you want it to be connected to the infotainment system. And then in here, you've got loads of room down here. Maybe you'll put your wallet or your purse or even a small bag could squeeze into here. You've also got two USB ports and also an SD card port as well, which I assume is for your sat nav. Loads of space as well in the cubby holes in the door. That's the same for the other side. Space and actually the shape for a cup so you can get another cup in there. It's just a lovely place to sit. Fit and finish is really good. The steering wheel is nice and big so it'll be nice and easy to steer around town. Dash feels good. It just feels very comfortable. And the seats really accentuate that. These leather seats are so cushioned, nicely adjustable. They're electrically adjustable as well. And you also get heated seats as well. So it's generally speaking, it's a really, really nice place to be. Now, when it comes to the interior of the BMW, there is an immediate difference where there were curves and chrome and soft features in that Mercedes. In here, there are sharp angles and sharp edges. And that's because it's trying to be a little bit sportier. And actually, you can really feel that sat in the driver's seat because immediately I feel like I'm sat a little bit lower. I'm sort of wrapped around by the dashboard a little bit more and the steering wheel comes closer to me. It just feels a little bit more like that driver centric car. That being said, there's a lot of similarity. I mean, firstly, again, we've got a digital instrument cluster and we've got a digital infotainment system. Again, not the latest from BMW, but very, very good indeed. And it's controlled by this rotary knob down here, which I approve of. It's very easy to use. BMW's iDrive systems are excellent. And you can also use the touchscreen if you do prefer that. And when it comes to elsewhere in the interior, we've got loads and loads of storage spaces, very much similar to what the C-Class has. We have two cup holders here. We've got a phone section down there where you can leave your phone and a USB port as well. And then in the middle here, we have more storage space, a USB-C port, just the one this time, but it is USB-C. And the storage itself isn't quite as deep, but it's definitely wider. So probably give or take the same volume. Very usable indeed. Door pockets as well are really good. You've got space to put your keep cup or, or something with a lid on it down here. And then you've also got a bit more storage room down there as well. And then just fit and finish in this interior is really, really nice. Uh, it's just a great place to sit. And as I mentioned, the seating position is really good. The seats are a little bit firmer. They pinch you a little bit more. So they're not quite as cosseting as that Mercedes, but I think these seats go with the vibe of this car. Now in the back of the Mercedes is actually a very nice place to be, especially when you've got the dual panoramic sunroof that we have in this car because it opens up a bit of space and it makes it nice and airy. Okay, there's not tons of space to the side of me here. So if I was to push my head up against the side, I haven't got that much room, but it's just very nice and it does feel very airy, as I said, with that screen above me. Now, when it comes to space for my legs and my feet, which is crucial if you're sitting in the back of these for a long time, well, there's good room, loads and loads of knee room, even though this seat is set as I like it. And I can even tuck my feet under the seat ahead despite it being as low as it will go so that's really really good and it's going to make 
for more comfort on long journeys. If you're a middle seat passenger, it's also not too bad. I mean, you're sat higher, and of course, if you've got three adults in the back, it's gonna be snug. But if, for example, you've got two kids and maybe the parents sacrificed the ride in the middle, it's not too bad, it's comfortable, and you get a proper seatbelt as well. But most of the time, you're gonna be using this as a four-seater, of course, and if you are, handily, when you lower this bit down here, you've got a bit of storage space. There's some room here for paperwork or, I don't know, file of facts or something. And then if you've got some drinks to put away, firstly, you've got space down here. You've got a segment where you can put a keep cup, but if you've got a can of fizzy pop, for example, you might want to put it in these nifty little bits down here. They're quite cool. They sort of fold away and then they provide a little tray for your cup. So it's quite a cool feature. And it's a nice place to be in the back here. You of course also have vents here, but you can't control your temperature separately in this particular car. It's just a case of turning them on or off. So the guys in the front have the power when it comes to whether you're warm or cold. All right, so now we're in the back of the BMW and firstly, it feels more spacious. The roof line definitely doesn't fall away quite as quickly. So immediately I can feel, even though we don't have a panoramic sunroof in this car, I can just feel there's a bit of more headroom to the side. And I mean, certainly no less headroom above me. And my feet as well, I can't tuck them quite as far under the seat as I could in the Mercedes. And I think that's because this seat just goes lower, but I just have more room in the first place. And you can actually see the added knee room here. It's quite considerable. So in terms of actual space in the back seats, it's really, really very good. Although, in the middle seat, this transmission tunnel is enormous. It's really, really high. So it means while I don't feel like there's much difference in, in terms of shoulder space, I just feel like I'm putting my legs either side of a much larger tunnel. So that might impede passengers who ride in the middle a little bit more. But as a four seater, it's very, very good. And like the Mercedes, you also get this pull down section here. Now it has this nifty cup feature up here. It means you don't have any space up here for storing whatever you want to store. So slightly fewer features, but by and large, very much the same experience. And you do of course still get your cup holders down here and a little bit of space down there. Now I've noticed as well that the vents in the back of this BMW, they also have a, a few more controls. You can actually adjust the temperature and the direction as well as just turning them on and off. So the back of the BMW, I think, is a slightly nicer place to be, but only just, and that's only if there were two of you in the back rather than three. Now back at the Mercedes, firstly, we've got an electric tailgate. And secondly, it's got a very, very easily accessible boot because the screen ends quite far back here and the tailgate section is nice and wide. It means you've got great access to this pretty deep boot. In fact, it goes way down into there. And while it's not flat all the way along, there is a slight lip at the end. It's just pretty good and nice and spacious. And in this car, we don't have a spare wheel, which means you've got a tire repair kit down there, but it fits snugly. and means you've got loads of extra space to hide anything you want under the floor here. When it comes to our family suitcase, well, it's a doddle really, just throw it in. Look at the space. I mean, no wonder these are so popular with cab drivers doing the airport run. You can get a suitcase in there, no doubt another suitcase there, and of course, a lot more space around it. And then you've got these little storage bin areas over here as well for anything loose. So as far as a boot goes in a saloon, it's very good. As for the BMW, firstly, you don't get an electric tailgate. It's spring activated, but that's a very light boot. And you can see immediately that it's a slightly narrow opening. The Mercedes is just a bit wider. So if you're carrying big items and loading them in, this is gonna be a little bit more tricky. Although it does go really far back. You've got lots of space under there. And of course, you've still got the usual bits, cubby holes down the side. But you might have already known this. Because this is the hybrid model, you don't get lower boot storage down here. The floor doesn't go very low at all because under that carpet are the batteries. Now, of course, if you were to go for the petrol or diesel version of this 3 Series, you would have much more space. The boot would be much lower. And actually, I know that this is only, in normal specification, only 10 litres smaller in terms of boot space compared to that C-Class. So really, you're getting a very similar offering, but there are a couple of crucial advantages to that C-Class, namely, it's got a slightly wider section up here. And I think the storage around the edges as well is just a little bit more usable in that Mercedes. So yeah, nothing major, but you might just find that the C-Class is a bit better. We'll throw in our suitcase here, even though of course it isn't entirely relevant given that this is the hybrid model. But as you can see, it goes in nice and deep and gives you again, a bit of space up here. So if you didn't have the hybrid model, you'd have a bit of a deeper boot for a bigger suitcase. But even with the hybrid model, there's enough space in there for a family to use that, I think anyway. All right, so now we're behind the wheel of the C-Class, which I can tell you 
Within two meters, I was like, this is a lovely thing to drive. Honestly, it just feels so effortless and so comfortable. The steering is light. It's just a really nice place to be. This particular car is a C220D, so it's got the turbocharged four-cylinder diesel engine. But of course, you can get six cylinders, you can get six cylinder petrols as well, and four cylinders, and a plug-in hybrid. And in the latest model, there's mild hybrid tech across the range. So you're really well catered for, but speaking specifically about this diesel, well, yeah, okay, diesel cells aren't massive these days, but when you jump in a car like this, you remember why these are so good and especially why they're so excellent on the motorway. They just settle into a cruise. I'm doing 55 miles per hour. Let's pick it up to motorway speed and I'll just feel the car it just feels so calm and composed. There we go, motorway speed, yeah. Really quiet, I can talk with a low volume. It's such a lovely place to be. Brakes are nice, the steering is really good. It's not too quick, but it just feels nice and reactive on the front. There's a bit of a softness to the car, but that's nice. You know, you wanna carry passengers in this car and you want them to be comfortable. So it just goes around corners effortlessly. It's got good torque, bags and bags of torque actually. And it just feels really quite luxurious and plush to drive. Now there are drive modes, which I will flick through. So if I go into eco mode, yeah, that just slows the accelerator down. I don't really care for eco modes. We put it into sport, yeah, sharpens it up a bit. Sport plus sharpens it up a lot more. Gearbox becomes quicker. You can use the paddles on the steering wheel, but the body roll in this car, this particular car doesn't have adaptive suspension. It's just got a passive suspension, which means the suspension is the same setting all the time. And that's to say it's comfortable all the time. If you want to go around corners quickly, yeah, it will do it. There's loads of grip but it doesn't feel natural. There's a bit of body roll, it sort of pitches and leans about. So do you know what? I'm gonna stick it back into comfort mode. You can individualize some of the modes. You can change the steering weight, you can change how the gearbox reacts on the engine, but come on, they've tuned it to perfection for this car in comfort. And it's just a nice place to be. Road noise is really low. Wind noise, I can hear a bit over the mirrors, but it's so low. The visibility as well, I must say, is really good. The door mirrors are quite thick, they're quite tall. Great visibility over the nose. I've set the seat nice and low, but I can still see the bonnet ahead of me. And when I look to the rear as well, I can see clearly out the back. The rear window looks really close. They must have magnified that, that glass up there because it means I can see really clearly. But then if I bring the car to a halt and I put it into reverse, you'll note that actually I have a reversing camera. Not only do I have a reversing camera, but I also have a 360 view, which is generated by the cameras around the car. So it basically means that I can go into the narrowest of spaces with ease and drive around with great visibility. Even when I click it into drive, I get a little camera on the nose, which shows me just in case I hadn't noticed there was a bollard, for example, that might not have noticed because it was too low. It's gonna show me there. And then of course, you've got all these driver assistance features, adaptive cruise control, autonomous emergency braking. So if I hadn't spotted the bollard, hopefully the car will have and will hit the brakes. And you've got so much other tech to play with as well. And we're back in the BMW 3 Series. Now, this of course being the 330E means that it's got a plug-in hybrid system, but I'll try and talk to you about how this feels generally as a 3 Series before I get into the details of the hybrid system. Now, firstly, it's as expected. I mean, I have driven one of these before, but the feeling of sportiness does carry through into the way this car actually drives. It's not just because of the seating position and because of those design details I mentioned earlier. No, it actually does feel like a sportier car. The steering is a bit sharper. It's actually a little bit heavier as well. And the car just reacts a little bit more keenly over the nose. That Mercedes felt nice and soft and composed, whereas this, again, feels comfortable but just has a slight edge to the ride. It just feels a little bit more like it wants to be a bit more sporty. And especially now with this M Sport package on this car, you just get a few additions and a few tweaks to the suspension that make it that much more driver centric, I'd say. But that being said, it's still a very relaxing place to be. I mean, the road noise is low, there's no wind noise. This 330E with this powertrain is a very interesting car. In fact, for those who still find hybrids attractive for various reasons, whether it's because you've got a small commute, this thing will do, according to BMW, 35 miles in fully electric power. But actually what makes this car more interesting, I think, is the fact that that electric power makes it pretty entertaining, actually. It's pretty quick. And so if I flick it through its drive modes, we've currently got it in high room mode, but if I put it into sport, there's a sport mode called extra boost, which sounds quite fun. And you put your foot down and yeah, you get a right old kick in the backside. The ZF gearbox in this is really very good. And with these shift paddles as well, it's quite entertaining to use. I will say in this hybrid model, the brakes can be a little bit numb. They work perfectly well and they're very, very strong. Definitely as strong as the Mercs. 
but they're just the pedal communication isn't quite as good. But yeah, with this hybrid system, you just get that initial touch of the accelerator, you get a real kick up the backside before the engine's really woken up, before it's in the right gear and revs. That electric boost is just a nice little kick up the backside. So if you like sporty feeling cars and you need to do a lot of miles on the motorway, but you live in a city, so you might want to drive around electrically on the weekend. 330E, yeah, this is a great option. And it handles really nicely as well. I mean, around the bends, I can definitely feel the BMW is the more agile, more energetic car. It just feels like it wants to go quicker. And I think that's a good thing. It really means there's a difference between these two cars. Even in a standard trim, even without all the M Sport bits, this 3 Series just feels a little bit more athletic, a bit more sporty. But then it sacrifices a little bit in the way of ride comfort. Whereas the Mercedes, well, that doesn't care about being sporty, not in the normal trims anyway. And so it really is unashamedly a comfortable, comfort-focused car. What about visibility? Well, I can tell you firstly that the door mirrors definitely don't have quite as wide of a view, and I think it's because they're a little bit slimmer, but overall it's actually very good. I, I don't quite have that wide view through the window like I did at the back uh, of the Mercedes, but actually the visibility is very good. I can see over the bonnet, and if I bring the car to a stop and I click it into reverse, I've got a rear view camera which is nice and sharp, and then I've also got a 360 view. Now it's not in this car a 360 view using cameras, it's using sensors. So the illustration I have is CGI rather than visuals that are stitched together. This will show me where things are as lines and dots rather than actually giving me the full picture in cameras. But that's fine, I mean, you've still got great visibility. It means you're still gonna be able to see when you've got things ahead of you. For example, those unforeseen bollards. So the Mercedes just edges it with that camera. I mean, the visibility is a little bit better in that Merc, but come on, this BMW is still very, very good indeed. And in fact, it comes packed with driver assistance features just like the Merc. You've got cruise control, you've got a speed limiter, all of the key things you'll need as well. Those safety features like autonomous emergency braking, etc., are all locked and loaded in this car. So you can feel safe as well as feeling comfortable and like you're in something a little bit sporty. So handily, these two cars, while having many things in common, are actually quite different. The BMW is a little bit sportier, it's a bit more of a driver-centric car, whereas the C-Class, well, that has a slightly more comfort-focused feel. And of course, it has a slightly bigger rear section, so if you carry passengers in the back or you do loads of miles on the motorway, that is probably the one to go for. Although, if you're like me, something like that BMW isn't gonna be very easy to ignore. It's so much fun to drive around corners. Although either way, you're gonna find yourself in a fantastic car. These are two excellent executive machines. 